long time with the Cancer Council, NHMRC and Cancer Australia. Um, before I start, um, I would like to acknowledge the medical people, uh, the traditional owners of this land, and to elders past, present and emerging, uh, welcome today. Um, and if we have any other Indigenous or Torres Strait Island members here, please welcome. Um, so today is really about um, seeing different perspectives of the consumer research partnership and it is a partnership, and so I really look forward to engaging all of the audience uh, along this journey. Um, today we are privileged to, to have two highly committed research consumers, Catherine Leaney and Gino Yori, who will provide their perspectives on the importance of consumers in research. This will be followed by me giving a brief overview of a researcher's perspective, and Stephanie McMillan will highlight the role of the Translational Cancer Research Network. The four vignettes will then be followed by a panel interactive discussion. Um, so uh, if, you, if you have a burning question, feel free to ask, but I think it'll be much better given the different perspectives to hold questions for a panel discussion at the end. Um, and David Goldstein will also, as the director of the TCR, <coughs> be joining us in that panel discussion. Today will also be videoed um, as a, for an educational purpose and put on the TCRN website. Uh, just to highlight um, how engaged we are as a community in involving consumers. So please join me in welcoming our first speaker, Catherine Leaney, who, as a cancer survivor, is proud to be involved in a multitude of consumer activities, including research projects from universities, medical research institutes. She has served on consumer review panels for Cancer Council New South Wales and the National Breast Cancer Foundation. She has a particular interest in early diagnosis, influencing the way clinicians interact with the patients, and preventing other patients going through what she experienced as a patient with breast cancer. So welcome and thank you. Thank you, Phoebe, and hello everybody. And I can see some of my researchers and some other consumers in the audience. So. Um, please bear with me as I go through this because some of you will have heard some of it before. So I am a uh, consumer representative and I do work with a number of researchers here at the university. In fact, at this year I've picked up 10, 10 researchers. Um, I also uh, am a consumer rep with some researchers at Sydney University and the University of Newcastle. So, and that's just on Mondays and Tuesdays, the rest of the week I do other things. So what I'm going to talk about today is just basically what is consumer um, involvement in research, why it's important to do it, and how does the relationship work? So a number of researchers, particularly if you're doing basic research, you sometimes have the question, well, how am I going to involve a consumer when my research is looking down a microscope so far away from the actual end user? A few do's and don'ts, how to actually make the relationship work well, and a little bit about why I am a consumer rep. So as Phoebe mentioned, it is an active partnership. It's about uh, an informed consumer who has been trained, who is willing to spend time to get to know the research, the researchers, the team, and talk about the research, the process, the decisions, how it will impact on the end user, um, practice and policy and service delivery. It's about doing things with the consumer, not to the consumer or for the consumer. And it really is a two-way interaction. It has to be two-way. I read, and I'm in the process of reading a number of grants for the National Breast Cancer Foundation at the moment, and when a researcher says, you know, we will put out a newsletter and we will hold a seminar and invite the community, that's not con consumer involvement. That's just a one-way interaction. It has to be two ways. A consumer is not a patient who is a participant in a research trial. Uh, although these people are really important, it's not what research granting bodies look for when you're talking about consumer involvement. It's not somebody who comes along to one of those seminars and asks a question from the floor. That's not consumer involvement either. And it's not a researcher who happens to have had breast cancer or some other form of cancer who's on your team. Although it's really good if, as a research team, you include your consumer as an AI or something like that. Or if the, if the consumer has a researcher or a medical background, by all means, 
include them in the team, but, but if, it's, if it's a member of your team already um, who has had cancer and you put them down as the consumer rep, that won't hold water with the, um, the bodies that give the grants. Why do it? If you think about where research money comes from, it comes from the public, and the public want to know that that money is being used wisely. It's being used that will help the public, help the end consumer, and so it's really important that the consumer will help the researcher focus on that end user. And you know, if you're looking down a microscope, it is very difficult to think about how this is going to impact on somebody who's just been diagnosed with cancer. You know, and it might be years down the track, but it's really important right at the very beginning to have a, a person in mind when you're looking down that microscope. It, it makes you as uh, researchers more accountable and the process is more transparent. And also the consumer can help you disseminate those results. A number of consumers are members of other uh, bodies, <coughs> Cancer Voices and places like that, so they can help you. And the other thing is that those of us who've been through the diagnosis, the treatment and all of that, can help you as researchers think about what that's like. If you've never experienced you know, a diagnosis like that yourself, for somebody to come along and say, well, this is what happened to me, and I would really like for your research to prevent that from happening to somebody else, that's a really powerful message. And also, and I put this down last because it is important, but it is not the only reason, that a number of bodies now require you to have one and possibly two consumers uh, and to fill out a consumer review section, um, consumer involvement section when you're doing your application for grants. How does it work? Okay, so the consumer can come along and can review your grant application. And please, those of you who are researchers and are going to put in a grant application, do not leave it till five minutes to midnight. Okay? Give the consumer plenty of time. Like I said, I had 10 applications to read this year, so if they'd all sent them to me the day before they were due, they, you know, some of them would have missed out. So we can review grants and provide feedback. Um, we can ask questions <laughs> about the direction of your research, the methodology, how you're going to um, approach consumers, uh, patients, um, how it's going to impact on consumers and end users at the end and communicate your research plan. So researchers, I mean, my partner's an engineer and he talks engineer speak. And I remember he gave me a paper that he was, he'd written and the first paragraph was about 35 lines long and it was one sentence. <laughs> and I said, that's no good. Um, so what we can do as lay people is help you, you know, turn your applications, your newsletters and things like that into something that people can really understand. And as a researcher, you can explain your research to the consumer in simple, easy to understand language. And that might be a real challenge to begin with because you deal with each other all the time. You're in a university environment, you're using all of that, you know, techno speak. So really it's a it's a you know it's an extra challenge for you to have to do that. You can introduce us to your entire team, take us on a lab tour, you know, we love that sort of stuff, and we promise to wear closed-in shoes. Um, you can ask us questions um, and keep in touch and provide updates all the way through. Even if you're not applying for a grant or even if you weren't successful, keep us up to date. There are different levels of research, obviously, and so the, the involvement of consumers can be, uh, it will be different at different times. So here's one of my wonderful researchers. Um, and if, uh, if you're doing basic or preclinical research, then it's really about uh, it could be, you could be asking us about the ethics of particular research, about um, focusing on that end person, that end person who's going to benefit from this. And also, how many, like when, we're, when I'm reading applications, if the research is focused on, you know, a very, very small number of people who are suffering from a particular type of research, well, how is it that they've got a really difficult um, prognosis or a very poor, a high burden of the disease. So we can ask those sorts of questions. And again, the lay summaries. If you're in the middle, um, then we can help you write the grant, only the consumer section, not the whole thing. 
because um, most consumers are not research, they're not technical, we're not medicine, we're not doctors, we're not scientists, we're just people off the street. Um, but we can help write or comment on documents, um, we can review consumer-related sections of grant applications. If you're writing a consent form for a clinical trial or something like that, we can help you with that. We can help you um, recruit or talk about recruitment of potential um, patients or people for studies. So there's all sorts of things that we can help you with. And each of us comes to the consumer involvement area with different skills. And at the, at the other end, once you've been absolutely fantastic and you've got that grant, then we can help you uh, look at how to implement your research findings, evaluate the, the research, um, and develop plain language uh, summaries. Okay, I've got to go quickly because I'm running out of time. So mm -hmm. do get to know us, um, find out about our background, our experience, why we're interested in, in becoming a consumer rep, make it easy for us. We're all busy people, so you know, try and work around us as well. Um, meet the whole team, allow lots of time for discussion, keep in touch, share successes, and it's also an opportunity for improved communication skills. So I know with a couple of my researchers, they get their teams to come and do presentations to us. So it's giving the team an opportunity to improve their communication skills as well. Don't, as I said, give us the applications at five minutes to midnight. Don't use jargon, don't make assumptions about what we do and don't know. Be patient with us. Um, we will ask lots of questions. And don't see consumer involvement as just a tick the box. It is a lot more than that. Why am I a consumer rep? Well, I just <coughs> think it's absolutely fantastic. And as Phoebe said in the introduction, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and my experience wasn't the best. Um, I, mean, I don't think anybody's uh, experience is good, but if I can help uh, somebody else avoid what I had, then that would be fine. Um, I learn every day. I'm learning so much. I mean, I didn't know half the things that I knew a couple of years ago. I still can't pronounce some of the words, but never mind. I'm still learning. And I'm inspired by the wonderful researchers and all the things that you guys are doing. And as a member of uh, Cancer Council New South Wales and National Breast Cancer Consumer Review Panels, I assist with the decisions about funding research, and I think that's important as well. And I wish there was so much money that we could give every application more money, but unfortunately that's not the case. So that's my eight minutes. Thank you very much, Catherine. You're inspiring to all of us. And uh, on behalf of everyone here, we thank you for everything you do um, towards our grants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's a pleasure now to introduce uh, one of my consumers and valued team member, Mr. Gino Yori. Gino has a strong connection to pancreatic cancer. He sadly lost his brother David to pancreatic cancer after just a three and a half month battle. And sadly, this is all too common for pancreatic cancer. Deeply affected by this, Gino wanted to make a positive difference by becoming integrated as a consumer across several different groups and foundations. Together, we have contributed to the national strategy into pancreatic cancer, and I'll share a positive outcome of that national strategy with you in my talk. And he's passed on his knowledge as a consumer to Cancer Council consumer training workshops and giving back to all consumers and providing advice like Catherine. Thank you, Gino. Thank you very much, Phoebe. Um, I'll probably go over some of the um, points that were raised previously. Um, my brother David was diagnosed with uh, stage two pancreatic cancer in June 2011 and was informed that it was terminal and that he only had one month to live. As you can expect, this was a big shock to him as well as um, his family and friends. And David wasn't quite 50 years of age, but he was a very fit and healthy person and he never had any prior health issues. His only symptoms were recent. Uh, he was finding it a bit hard to digest food as well as having a stabbing pain in his back. He was told that chemotherapy might extend his life, but it wouldn't save his life. He underwent palliative chemotherapy and I witnessed his health deteriorate over time. 
I was with him when he passed away after a three and a half month battle with cancer. After he passed away, I felt that I had to do something to help find a cure for pan pancreatic cancer so that other patients and families would be spared the same experience and outcome that my brother and my family endured. In 2011, a family friend asked me if I was interested in being involved in cancer research and I visited the Ingham Institute of Applied Medical Research at Liverpool and we had an information session there. I then joined Cancer Voices New South Wales. I then completed the Kent's Consumer Involvement in Research training course and was matched with research teams seeking consumer involvement through Cancer Voices. I've been fortunate that I'm working with two independent pancreatic cancer research teams that are both based in my home city of Sydney. Associate Professor Phoebe Phillips heads the Pancreatic Cancer Translational Research Group and is Deputy Director of the Adult Cancer Program at the Lowy Cancer Research Centre, New South Wales Medicine. Professor Manodia Party is Professor of Medicine of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of New South Wales and the EM Institute of Applied Medical Research. Working with these two teams has given me a much better understanding and appreciation of current research into pancreatic cancer and the great effort and results that both teams are achieving, as well as the increasing funding challenges that all medical research teams are facing in Australia. I've also worked with um, other cancer research teams um, involving breast cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer and prostate cancer. I feel that my input into research projects from the consumer or community represented point of view, as well as those of other consumers working with teams, has been considered, appreciated and included in research projects. I think this will only lead to better projects and outcomes for all stakeholders. I think it's quite challenging for researchers to communicate their researchers to the broader community they must put their very specialised and technical research into a language and context that is easily understood. It is important that researchers' challenges and successes are communi communicated to the broader community. It is not only the patients of the research, as well as the family and friends, but other stakeholders, such as many people that make donations to research organisations, as well as the government who provide the funding for research. And they all have a right to see the outcomes of their in investment. It also allows stakeholders to provide feedback to researchers and demonstrates that there are real project outcomes and not just research for the sake of doing more research. So some of the roles and tasks that I've been involved in as a research consumer, um, I've been involved in about two dozen uh, research grants and mainly involved with uh, re reviewing the lay summaries for those um, grants. Um, grants have been for Cancer Council, Cancer New South Wales, Cure Cancer, Cancer Institute of New South Wales, as well as the NHMRC. Um, some research teams have um, named me as an associated um, investigator on grants and. I suppose um, it's good to be uh, appreciated and acknowledged as part of the research, but the part that we play is a very small part and the researchers do 99% of the hard work. Um, I've also parted, partnered with Associate Professor Phoebe Phillips to train other Cancer Council consumers and I've attended symposiums for World Pan Pancreatic Cancer Day. Um, at the last one I suggested that we needed to develop a pancreatic cancer strategy and uh, it's good to see that the Abner Pancreatic Foundation have actually developed that and I believe it came out this year. So uh, it's, it's good that all of this research is going on but it's all going on in separate places and I think what, what needs to happen um, with pancreatic cancer, I'm, I'm aware like the brain cancer did this, you, you need to sort of like show how one project fits into a bigger strategy. And I think if you can demonstrate that, then you've got a better chance of 
perhaps getting more funding from the government. I've also um, done some TV interviews with Channel 7 and uh, Prime 7 and Channel 9 for the uh, project that Associate Professor Phoebe Phillips and her team were uh, working on involving a pancreatic cancer project uh, with nanoparticles. I'm not going to go describing what the whole thing is because it's, it's very long, but um, the excellent outcomes for that project and um, great promise uh, with, with what they found. I'm also on the Ingham Research Institute Cancer Research Community Panel. There's about uh, eight of us there and um, it's, it's quite good, I suppose, there because you're meeting with other uh, consumers and being presented with the outcomes of um, other projects. And um, I was also invited to be part of the Cancer Clinical Academic Group's Management Committee as a consumer rep, and um, we actually met this morning just prior to this, uh, to this, um, <coughs> this forum. Um, what's the challenges of being a, a consumer? Well, uh, working full time and trying to find um, time to meet the researchers uh, at a time which is convenient to all. Um, I try to arrange meetings on my day off and I do a lot of communication via phone, email, Skype and, and Zooming. Um, but there's, there's one thing that I haven't uh, put on there and I think um, it was brought up previously and um, that's understanding some of the medical and biological um, terms and jargons. <laughs> um, I, I can understand it being in, in the um, being in the actual uh, proposal that goes forward, but in the late <coughs> summary, it's, it's a bit you know um, difficult seeing those words there. Um, I've actually got an honours degree in chemical engineering from the University of New South Wales, and I'm a, a fellow of. Um, Engineers Australia, uh, but some of the words and jargons are well beyond my uh, comprehension. And if I can't actually understand those words, what chances a normal person out the street got of um, understanding it? Um, Peter Hatfield is a two time Olympic uh, participant in the decathlon event, and um, he's actually employed by Sydney Water as a communications person um, who I work with. A few years ago, he uh, reviewed a presentation that I was going to give at a conference. And um, at, at, at my review, he said that he gave me some advice that the um, former test cricketer, Max Walker, who I believe passed away last year, gave to, um, gave to him when Peter first went into um, um, TV commentary. And he said to Peter, do you think you'd be able to um, describe described this to a mate down at the pub and Peter said yes I think I'll be able to do that and so he said Peter the people out there on the TV they're just like your mate down at the pub just explain it to them pretending they're a mate down at the pub, at the pub sorry. Um, so if you want to find uh, cancer research consumers um, there's cancer voices there's a link there there's a form you can fill out and submit online um, I'm aware of some people that have actually advertised for consumers in local newspapers, and I suppose you could always put something online. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gino, and you play a major role, not a minor role. And you've taught me everything about men and medicine. <laughs> Um, I, I won't reiterate everything that's been said because it was so nicely presented by Gino and Catherine and I agree with all of their points. I've played a major role in changing health policy in Australia and for me, when I go and meet with politicians, actually I'm the worst advocate because I'm biased. I'm asking for increased investment into health and medical research. So actually consumers are our best voices and advocates to actually change our situation in health and medical research. And that cannot be undervalued. And certainly in the field that I work in, in pancreatic cancer, we've had a huge impact um, in utilising 
consumers and patient advocates actually helping inform policy. And I think that's really critical and something that we tend to forget. And to do this, it's essential that we work together so that we create a sustainable funding pot for all health and medical research. And also, you'll notice many philanthropic foundations have a personal connection to cancer. And so having us talk with them regularly and utilising them as an advocacy voice to politicians and government is very useful and critical, I think. So, as mentioned over and over again, it's a joint venture. There is no minor party, we're equals. Um, and that's something I feel very strongly about because without our consumer involvement, I don't think we can do what we do. So I have um, three different consumers. Um, my very first consumer was Carolyn Kelly, who lost her husband to pancreatic cancer quite young. And she set up the Pancreatic Cancer Avna Foundation. Um, we have Gino that you've just heard from, and he's been involved in our group for almost five years. And also Gino gave me the courage to contact Claire Harvey, um, who sadly lost her father, Peter Harvey, to pancreatic cancer. And she's the deputy editor of the Daily Telegraph, and she's heavily involved in helping um, write some of the lay communications and advising me on the best approach to communicate from both a policy perspective as well as a research perspective. Okay, so my consumers helped me at the earliest stages all the way through to the most developed part of my research, the planning, communicating, disseminating uh, my research. And I think also keeping me on the straight and narrow, on the rails, because I think it's really easy for us to get caught in our silo and chase things, which, which maybe if someone doesn't question us, well, why, haven't you already got that no-go signal? Why are you doing that? <laughs> I think it's really critical to keep us on, on track. Um, I recognise all of my consumers every time I present. They're associate investigators on my grants and they're acknowledged in publications. I think it in, has improved my team's capacity to troubleshoot. Sometimes I come up with what I feel is a huge challenge and just having a phone chat with Gino, he's got it solved. Oh no, we've come up with a strategy together, I can sleep that night, you know. So I think this is really important. And as a consequence of that, they inspire and motivate me and my team. What we do, you don't get quick rewards in. So having that constant positive reinforcement and reminding us why we're doing something and why it's so important, um, I think you'll agree today we've got two inspiring consumers here and that's very powerful for us, I think. They're very well networked, our consumers. And so often we'll see things and point me in the right direction and something I hadn't thought of. So I, I don't think you can underestimate um, how much value they bring. As I mentioned, they help you prioritise your research. In the case of the Avnar Pancreatic Cancer Foundation, um, I often go and give community talks because they're donors, um, all of the people that donate. And most of the funding in Australia for research is taxpayer money. I think they have a right to know what we do with it, why we're doing what we do, and understand how that, that dollar has helped find a step forward to the disease, the disease that we're studying. I think that most importantly, um, consumers see practical problems that we don't see. And as I mentioned, they often also see the solution. And I think this is really critical. Um, and I think to bridge the gap between our highly technical science and the community, because we're funded by taxpayers, is really important to increase the acceptance of our findings. So um, Gino was one of the core consumers involved in probing us as, as a group of researchers involved in the Avna Pancreatic Cancer Foundation to actually do a political advocacy strategy. And we started this um, together, myself, Carolyn, and a couple of other of their board members about a year ago. And you might have seen a large advertisement with government committing money if Labor had got in. They didn't win the election, unfortunately. But certainly that strategy has now put a framework to government and they're constantly looking at how they can improve uh, investment into this disease. So that's just an example of how a consumer, researchers, um, a founding organisation come together to actually make a difference. I think there are a number of challenges that